Welcome to the Lessons for Living television program. My name is Bill Santos. Thank you so much for watching. The Sea Watch subdivision out in British Columbia was built by a private developer. The property was purchased in 2004 as part of a larger site that was in foreclosure proceedings. In June of 2012, a sinkhole appeared, and then another in 2015, and then in 2018, another sinkhole appeared in one of the remaining undeveloped lots. Well, the sinkhole problem became so serious that all 14 dream homes had to be abandoned and the entire subdivision was condemned by the local authorities. Now to make matters even worse, the homes that originally sold between one and $1.2 million are today right now worth $2. $1 for the land, $1 for the house. You see, the most important part of building a home is not what you build, nor how you build, but where you build. You'd be better off to build a log cabin on a rock than you would to build a mansion in a swamp. Now, there's a difference between building a house and building a home. This world is full of houses that do not have a home within them. But a house and a home do have something in common. Both their destiny and their durability depends on their foundation. It is one thing to build a good-looking house. It's another thing to build a long-lasting home. The key to building a home that will last forever is to build that home on the rock. Jesus closed out the greatest sermon ever preached, the Sermon on the Mound, by telling the story of two men who each built a home. One home lasted through a storm and one home didn't. Matthew chapter 7, beginning at verse 24. Everybody who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise builder who built a house on bedrock. The rain fell, the floods came, the wind blew and beat against that house. It didn't fall because it was firmly set on bedrock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and doesn't put them into practice will be like a fool who built a house on sand. The rain fell, the floods came, and the wind blew and beat against that house. It fell and was completely destroyed. Jesus gives us three reasons why we need to make sure that our home is built on the rock if that home is to last forever. Point number one, every home will experience a storm. According to the story Jesus told, two men built two houses. Both started off the same, with exactly the same purpose. They wanted to build a place for their families to live. Both used similar plans. You know, it, all the homes in Bible days were very similar and very simple in design. Both built in the same place. The storm came to both houses. Now, the fact that one was a wise, godly man and the other was a foolish, worldly man made no difference. The rain fell, the wind blew, and the floods came on both houses. So, what is the lesson that Jesus is teaching? Well, simply put, every home faces problems and pressures. The rain, well, that represents pressure from above. The flood represents pressures from below. The winds represent pressure from around. But neither the rain, the flood, nor the wind 
ever take the time or the courtesy to determine whether or not it is coming against a godly home or an ungodly home. The reins of adversity fall on the home of those who go to church and those who don't. The floods of misery rise against the home of the child of God and the home of those that reject God. The winds of trouble blow against the home of the believer and the unbeliever. And if you think about it, it really doesn't matter where you live in Canada, you're going to face weather problems. So you see, Jesus here is not telling us how to find a safe place to live, you know, where the atmosphere is ideal, you know, the winds are gentle, the rain's controlled, where the sun always shines and the climate is perfect. That place does not exist anywhere on earth, but nor does it exist anywhere in life. There's another true story that is also very fascinating that happened in Long Island in 1938. It was the year that barometers were just coming into vogue. So this man, he went out and bought a barometer, brought it home, unwrapped it, and as he was hanging his barometer on the wall, he happened to look at the needle on the barometer, and it said that a hurricane was coming. He shook it, he beat it, he, he patted it, and he thought to himself, just my luck, I buy the one barometer that doesn't even work. So he took the barometer back, put it in the box, you know, got in his car, drove back into New York City, returned the barometer for another one, and when he got back to his house, it was blown away. You see, the barometer was right. There was a storm coming. The problem was not with the barometer, the problem was with the man who didn't believe the barometer. Now, I want to say to everyone that is watching, whether you're rich or poor, whether you're a believer or not, whether you're in the upper class, the middle class, the lower class, or you don't have any class, storms are going to come into your life. The Bible is right when it tells us that life has storms. So what we need to do is not shake or beat the barometer or take it to the store. We need to believe it and obey what it tells us to do so that when the storms come, we know they're coming. So why do storms come? Well, if you read this story, you'll find that the storm revealed the quality of the foundation of the two homes. You see, if you had just looked at these two homes from the outside, you would have never known which home was weak and which was strong, which would sink and which would stand. Only the storm can reveal which house is built on the rock and which house is built on the sand. Though these houses look similar on the outside, they were very distinct on the inside, which made all the difference in the world. Point number two. No faulty home will escape the storm. These two houses were basically the same structure with the same design, built out of the same materials. The only difference... But the big difference was the foundation. Where the first home was built on a solid foundation, the other home was built on a sandy foundation. And the results were disastrous. Verses 26 and 27, Matthew 7. But everyone who hears these words of mine and doesn't put them into practice will be like a fool who built a house on sand. The rain fell, the floods came, the wind blew and beat against that house, and it fell and was completely destroyed. This house had a faulty foundation. It represents the life of those that Jesus calls foolish. See, these are the people, they go to church, they listen to sermons online, but nothing they hear 
makes one bit of difference in the way that they live. I mean, they treat the Word of God just like they would treat a good movie. They enjoy it, but they never let it affect the way they live. I mean, you probably know someone like that. Can I let you in a little secret? Churches are full of people like that. We call them the fair weather followers. These are people who attend a church, listen to sermons, sing hymns, say amens, as long as the sun is shining, as long as the breeze is gentle and the rain is soft. But when the clouds turn black and that breeze now becomes a gale and that mist now becomes a monsoon, well, then their house is blown away. You see, there are two things that are necessary to have a firm foundation. First of all, we must be hearing the Word of God. Both of these men heard the Word of God. Now, that's very important. The reason is it important to hear the Word of God and to read the Word of God is because every time you do that, you're getting another rock that you can lay in your foundation. But you see, it's not enough just to be hearing the Word of God. We must be heeding the Word of God. Jesus said, the wise man, in verse 24, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice... Now, James was in the crowd listening to that sermon. He never forgot what Jesus said. Because years later, writing his book, he says in James chapter 1, verse 22, you must be doers of the word, not only hearers who mislead themselves. Now, if you think about it, only a foolish person deceives himself. Point number three. Any faithful home will endure the storm. The house that sank was built on a sandy foundation. But the house that stood was built on a solid foundation. Listen again to the words of Jesus. Verses 24 and 25. Everybody who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise builder who built the house on bedrock. The rain fell, the floods came, the wind blew and beat against that house. It did not fall because it was firmly set on bedrock. You see, Jesus calls this person wise. Now, the difference at first may seem quite minor, but I tell you, it's really quite major. You see, the wise person not only heard the word, but heeded the word. Now, that proved two things to be true about this person. And it tells us why they were called wise. Number one, they believed the word of God. What you really believe, you live because the rest is just talk. You may say you believe the Bible. You may say you love the Lord. You may say you are a person of real faith, but I just want to remind you of something else James said. James chapter 2, verse 26. He says, Faith without works is dead. This wise man in Jesus' story, he proved something else. Number two, he proved he belonged to the Son of God. Do you know who really belongs to Jesus? Those who become like Jesus. The Apostle Paul, 1 John chapter 2, verses 3 and 5. Look at what he tells us. This is how we know that we know him. If we keep his commandments, the one who claims I know him 
while not keeping his commandments, is a liar. And the truth is not in this person. But the love of God is truly perfected in whoever keeps his word. This is how we know we are in him. Now, if you want your house to last through the storms, that will come. If you want your home prepared for eternity, you had better build it on the same foundation God has built his house on. That is the Lord Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 11. Here's what it says. No one can lay any other foundation besides the one that is already laid, which is Jesus Christ. You see, we have a choice. We can build a home for the world that is here today, or we can build a home for the world that is coming tomorrow. You can build a home for the world you can see, or you can build a home for the world you cannot see. But I give you fair warning. If you build your home on money, success, fame, or happiness, it will fall. The question is, am I building my home on the solid rock? Or am I building my home on shifting sand? You know, there's a song that we have sung in our churches for over a hundred years. I'm going to quote that song, but I want to change one word in it just as I quote it. Ask yourself this question. Ask yourself, is this true of my home? Is this true of my family? Is this true of my life? Here comes the song. My home is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand, all other ground is sinking sand. Both of these men had ears to hear the word. But only one had the heart to heed the word. And that was the eternal difference. You see, God's word, this word, was not just meant to be written down. It was meant to be lived out. This truth stuck, it struck powerful to me in a piece that I read recently, which was simply called The Lesson. It said, Then Jesus took his disciples up to the mountain, and gathering them around him, he taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are the meek. Blessed are they that mourn. Blessed are the merciful. Blessed are those who thirst for justice. Blessed are you when you are persecuted. Blessed are you when you suffer. Be glad and rejoice. For your reward is great in heaven. Then it continues. Simon Peter said, Do we have to write this down? And Andrew said, Are we supposed to know this? And James said, will we have a test on this? And Philip said, I don't have any paper. And Bartholomew said, do we have to turn this in? And John said, the other disciples didn't have to learn this. And Matthew said, can I go to the boys' room? And Judas said, what does this have to do with real life? And Jesus said, wept. Friends, take this book. Teach it to your family. Not just listen to it, 
but learn from it. Live it. Because if you do that, then you know you are building your home on the solid rock. Let us pray. Gracious God, our loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for all of the blessings you pour out on us. Thank you for providing us Jesus Christ as our foundation for our life, for our homes, for everything that exists. Father, I pray for those right now that are finding that their life is on shifting sand. May they come to know the Lord Jesus and may he be the bedrock of their lives. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, we've come to the end of another Lessons for Living television program. Thank you so much for, for watching. Can you help us get the word out so that your friends and family can also tune in? You know, we know that you have all kinds of other options as to what you could be watching today, but you chose to watch our program. And we're truly thankful. We appreciate the time you have spent with us. Hope we get a chance to do it again next time. You know, if you have friends or family that live outside of the catchment area where, you know, our program can be watched, well, you can refer them to our website, l4ltv.com. Every single program we ever aired is accessible from the website. You just go on the website, you look under the tab that says previous programs. It takes you all the way back to the first season we were on the air. And you can go month by month. It'll connect you to our YouTube channel. All of the programs are there. You can watch them. You can share them. You can download them. They're all accessible there. Now, while you're on the website, check out also some of the resources we have there. We have a section called Archive Sermons. These are sermons that I've delivered in person in different places around the country. They're video. There's a video. There's a study guide that you can download and you can use to help you better understand that topic. I've tried to list some of the questions that I get asked the most often, like, can we know when the world will end? Why do bad things happen to good people? What happens to us when we die? You know, does the United States appear in Bible prophecy? Who or what is 666? Those are all there. Check those out. I think you'll find those interesting and, uh, and informative. There's another tab there that's important to us. It's the Donate Today tab. You know, our ministry is supported by the generosity of our viewers and friends and family. That's how it works. We are a charitable organization. So every dollar you send us is eligible for a tax deductible receipt that you can use for income tax purposes. Every dollar that is sent to us is reinvested directly in the ministry. None of that comes to myself or to my family. It goes to paying for the studio we're in right now and the airtime you're watching us on and the gifts we offer and the postage, you know, and the printing paper. All of that stuff is covered through that. Not a penny. I wanted you to know that. Not a penny comes to me or my family in terms of a salary or any kind of benefit personally to us. Also on the website, there's a live appearances tab where I'll be appearing live. Check that out. Sometimes in person, sometimes online. If you want to know where I'm going to be, that's where you, can, where you can find me. Social media. We have a Facebook page, so like our Facebook page. We have a YouTube channel. We have um, Twitter, Santos underscore Bill. This program, an audio version, is going to be on SoundCloud in about half an hour or so. You can download that, take that with you. You can share it with friends and family. And then we have Instagram, Santos underscore Bill. Follow me on Instagram. Every morning, 6.30 a.m., I put out a one-minute little devotional video. Many people tell me that's just how they get their day started. Check that out on Instagram. In the final 30, 40 seconds we have, we have another aspect of our ministry, which is our overseas, overseas humanitarian work. The organization is called Mission Now Canada. Check out the website, missionnowcanada.com. It'll show you where we're going, when we're going. Maybe you want to join us on an upcoming mission trip. They are a blast. Or if you can't go, 
you'd like to donate to a specific project, you can do that also from the website. Well, that's all the time we have for this week. Thank you so much for joining us. Hope to see you back again next time. God bless you. We'll see you then.